You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast brought to you by ascully.com. And here are your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. Happy Black Friday, everybody. Happy Black Friday, Sid Talk. Hmm. A, it isn't Friday. <laughs> you don't B, celebrate Black Friday? Number two. A, it isn't Friday. And B, number two. Is it happy? I think we're, I, know, I went to the store yesterday and I was like, uh, just the grocery store. Nah, I'm, I'm not into it. All right. <clears throat> Happy Did you go shopping? No, 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 no. Online. Online is the best. You don't have to <laughs> fight anybody for anything. It just turns up and then you just, you know, there's good prices. <laughs> Are there though? I think it's all a scam. So, you know, don't ask me about the sale shit. Yeah, you know. I'm very skeptical. <laughs> what was that? Somebody really skeptical was saying yesterday. Oh, Charlie Veach, you know that guy? Mm-hmm. He was saying, don't fall for Black Friday. Prices are cheaper on regular days. Just- I don't know about that, but mm-hmm. if the price is, you know, $100 every other day, and then they put it on sale for $50 on that day, then the price of 100 is actually overpriced. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. come on. It just depends on the item, but that's... People are... We're just so stupid. We're just stupid. We just stupid? Off, we're stupid. all stupid. All of us, including... <laughs> now, if you can get a $5 TV by going to the store at 2 in the morning and waiting in line for and, five hours... And fighting to the death to get it. <laughs> I mean, that's what has to come next, right? <laughs> yeah. It has to be Black Friday Network. And then on that network, every, every year on Black Friday, we have fights to the death for like $7 thumb drives and <clears throat> two... Two cent sets of plates or it's, something, you know. It's like the purge, but instead of purging, <laughs> well, we we're gonna purge humans and purge TVs at the same time. Get all the TVs out of the store. Uh, it is just farcical, really. It's just a bunch of shit. I mean, if you made food really cheap on that day, like if I went to the store and a tofurkey roast, which is normally fifteen dollars for us, we're vegetarian. If you don't know, um, so if we do want the tofurkey roast, it is pricey if tomorrow they put on sale for two dollars and they only had five i'd be like hmm i might go to the store for that yeah so um it is saturday november the 24th this is after the show we're a movie review podcast we're going to review a movie for you right now and this is our 558th edition the movie we're looking at this week is mile 22 it's a 2018 movie you can actually pick it up on blu-ray right now It's rated R, and it's from our friends at Universal, who sent us a copy for review, and Sid Talk will give you the synopsis of Mile 22. Hmm, Marky Mark. I have to start with that, because it seems unfair. Feel the vibration. It seems unfair to keep calling him that after 30 years. (laughs) Um, Marky Mark is in an elite group fighting, like, nefarious crime in the world. Oh, uh, that was a great synopsis. <laughs> I mean, it's not an original idea He's here. elite group, man. It's like a hidden, hidden organization almost. Not fully hidden, but, you know, those people who are disavowed by the government because when they go out on a mission, they have to pretend they don't exist. Yeah. But Ghosts. it sounds a lot like Jason Bourne or James Bond or a lot of those others. It's not a new idea, everybody. So don't get like, ooh, what's this new fancy movie we're going to watch? It's not new. No. It's agents, undercover agents doing the thing. They're really undercover, but they're just hidden. They do the nastiest stuff that your normal mission I think yeah, he said it, said it in the movie, didn't he? Something about like, you, first you go to, what, the normal military? Second you go to special ops? And third is these guys. Who yeah. don't really exist, yeah. but they do. So, you know, that's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. All right, so this is the new movie by Peter Berg, who... I didn't realize, I, for some reason this didn't click with me, but you've got, they call these, they call Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg the two Bergs. I didn't, I've, I didn't, Oh yeah. that the didn't tie that. together. They called Never them the even thought of that. <laughs> Duh. So this is like the fourth movie that they've collaborated on. Um, the other three were Lone Survivor, Deepwater Horizon and Patriot's Day. I liked all three of those movies. And this one, Mile 22, you know, it's not a... Those three were all true stories. And this one is not. It's a drama. Um, 
I didn't know what to expect. If you look at the cover of this movie, it looks like a generic action movie to me. Do you remember that one we saw with Marky Mark where there was containers on a ship? That was the one I was trying to explain to you earlier that I really liked. There was containers on a ship. Wasn't that they were... Rookie or something? What? Rookie? No, 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 no. Oh, Contraband. Contraband, yes. This, uh, this, Yeah, that was a similar type of Marky Mark movie to this one. You know, like a action thriller. Yeah. This one's more heavy on... I just read a review that said there's not much action in this movie. <laughs> I disagree. It's what like, movie are these people watching? Yeah, this movie's a 90-minute movie. I, I would say, like, the majority of it is action. Absolutely. And the way Peter Berg um, edits movies can irritate some people, I know. Like, because he is very fast moving and he likes to keep the story moving. I think it, and in there's this some case, mumbling. There's lots of, like, what I'm sure some people think are is how we all really speak. And so it's not all perfectly enunciated and easy to understand. There's a lot of that, too. Yeah, well, Mar- Marky Mark's character is this fast-talking... It's not just of, him, it's everybody. As all right, exact I, didn't have, I didn't have any issues with it, but the actual editing um, of this movie is that style where it is always moving, there's always music in the background, and it's it's all, it's like Jason Bourne also does this, where it always feels like it's a train moving along. It's never really stops for a quiet, like, two people in an office talking. It's still cutting around really yeah. fast when they're in an office talking, so... Never feels like it stops. And this movie is fairly short, 90 minutes. But it's full of action. And what I didn't expect from this movie, I actually, I'll say I liked this movie quite a bit for an action movie. And what I didn't expect from this movie was the level of, like, how visceral it is. Very. It is, it doesn't shy away from the violence. The, there are, like, scenes where I was like, oh my god, that's really over the top. But is it like in real life that probably would be how it is, right? When I somebody think... gets shot in a leg, or I whatever. don't know. You we know? we won't. We don't know. You know, interesting things on this movie though. Like some movies, you know, they shoot somebody gets shot, some CG blood flies out. In this movie, the makeup, like, of people when they've been shot, they swell up and that kind of thing. They actually did True. that in this movie. You don't really see that a lot. You just see people get shot and some blood goes on the floor. When you see people in this movie get shot and then you see them, it's like, oh, shit, the face is swollen up. I mean, I imagine when you get shot, you don't look very well, very good, right? I uh, wouldn't imagine. This movie made me go, oh, wow, gunshots are not nice. Um, the actual plot, the way it is handled, d- did you think that opening sequence was really exciting? I did. Yeah. With the house. Yeah, but they it was done in a way that felt my mind was like, is this a test? Is this a thing? And then people start actually getting shot. And I'm like, okay, it's not one of those simulated tests or anything. Or I actually thought it was a simulated test also. Right. <laughs> so it was shot in that way. There's like a little too trickstery for, you know. Kept cutting to like uh, CCTV footage quickly. Yeah, there's then... a lot of that in this movie. Yeah. Um, but let me start by, let me start off fully by saying I really enjoy this movie. The violence, yes, you. I can be like, oh my god, it just gets a, it saturates I mean, it's, you after it's a while. It's hardcore. It is, but there are times when I'm glad of the style that they, if they're going to do it and commit to it, I'm I'm behind it. It is. You don't have to watch it if you don't like it. It doesn't make you and I violent people. You know, whatever the argument is against violence in art or expressing it in any form of art or storytelling. There are times when you're like, ugh, you know, come on. What is this about? But this felt like the point they're trying to make is the human world is fucked up. And there are people in the world who are going to be constantly hammering away at every society, every culture. There's always a lurking evil around the corner. And I can't argue with that. It seems like that's the way humans are. You know what I mean? There are yeah. those humans. And so this is sort of the counterpoint to that. Like, don't fuck with us because this is... And that can apply to any culture, any nation of any kind. Not just an American idea. It's just... We know now we're swimming with the big dogs in the jerk department. We have to we have to be equal to that. And that's how I felt it was justified. But it was very powerful. There were things I was like, Ugh. I mean, my shoulders went up and I was like... Damn, that hurts. Breaking bones always gets yeah. me. 
Gore doesn't bother me at all, but the thing you said with the car window where he scrapes that guy's head in there. Yeah, explain that just in detail, just to make people Well, the guy's head flies through the car window, and then he grabs the guy's hair and scrapes his chin or the bottom of his neck along the broken glass, and you're just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Like, I can't even... It's not a good image. It's <laughs> it's a terrible thing to have in your head. And they don't cut away from it. You but see if it. you are trying to, if you're fighting for your life in that moment, I don't know what I would do. So who knows? It's a new trick up my sleeve, just in case anyone ever comes at me through my car window. You know what I'm saying? Like the the other thing I didn't expect from this movie is the visceral violence. I didn't. It, it's also got some martial arts in this movie, which I didn't see coming. Really, I mean. There's a lot of gunplay, like mm-hmm. John Wick, but there's also fight hand-to-hand combat that is not like regular just people punching each other. It's it's expert kind of, you know. There's a scene where a guy has a fight in a, a doctor kind of a medical room. God, that was crazy. Yeah, and it felt like... I was thinking when I was watching it, and I was like... You know, Atomic Blonde, I thought that those fights felt really visceral. Yep. This you... makes that look soft. Like, this is really... That was one of my recommendations. Yeah, but, I mean, this makes their fights not seem <laughs> hard at all. This just felt like, oh my god, the guy's... What did he have? Like, a, it was like a bone sore or something, and it was different... I don't know. You know, the side of a, a, a medical bed, like, where it reclines, that, like, plastic panel that you put your arms on? He was just killing... He was, like, whacking people with that thing, like, over kept, and over again. If you notice, the theme for that guy was handcuffing him all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, kind of but uh, actually, pointless. Like, it didn't seem to matter if he was handcuffed didn't or not. Didn't matter to him, no. no. <laughs> but um, this guy, you know... That, you know, there's a twist to this movie, I guess, in a way, right? Like, it... it yeah. But did you... Um, I kind of cottoned on to what was going on. I wasn't like... There is a moment towards the end of this movie where I think you're supposed to, like, be very surprised. <gasps> like, oh, I never yeah, saw that it coming. It never did that for me. No. But I was shocked at... I don't want to say it, but... Um, that don't room say it. with the computer. Yeah, yeah. And the, I was pretty shocked by what happened there, but it wasn't surprising. Got and it. I can see that they were trying to make it surprising. It was supposed to be one of those, ooh. But that kind of missed with me. But the rest of the movie, it really moves. Like, um, did we say what the... We didn't really say what the setup is. Just say what. why they're taking the guy from one place to another. I mean, it's a standard old story again. Um, he has a code to a disc that will help them find, uh, essentially the what uh, they need to have a nuclear weapon or blow up a city with a nuclear bomb right. hot, a dirty bomb he's not going to tell him the code because he wants them to get him to safety and the hard drive that he's put it on is encrypted like to fuck so so the time to... is at essence yeah and he essentially wants to bring down his government because they're he i go he's just a traitor against his government so but for some reason, he is playing the Americans to be like, nope, you got to get me to safety and then I'll save everybody. Right. So it's this race against time, him yeah. going across the city, this group of, you know, special op Well, better than special ops, I guess. The the elite guys. And gals. Women, lots of Guys and girls, which yep. I appreciated too. And they, you know, they drive him across the city. And that dr- that mission across the city is not smooth at all. <laughs> we said, didn't we? Oh, I didn't think this was going to go smooth, but nah. man, it was really, really a hardcore ride. It involved those crazy women coming at them in that restaurant. I know. <laughs> it involved like it was just crazy. Like nobody would probably survive that mission. I don't think it was just. So, Barely anybody did. Yeah, so the you know the main meat of the movie is them moving him across, but now now came to think of it, that only happens like at the halfway mark of the movie. So what did the first half of the movie? Even though I feel that the first half of this movie was really moving and fast, was it actually not? And I was fooled. Was there a load of action at the front? I feel like I mean that thing 
that you were talking about, the opening sequence, that's pretty, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, but then between that and them doing this mission, what it was that a lot of, it was just a lot of setup, really, wasn't it? Of mm. how, why we should care. The I mean, it felt like to me there was a fight every 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm not a huge fight fan, but in this one, it felt like, whoa, here's another one, whoa, here's another one. Yeah, you the, know? Pe- the people on IMDb who said there's no action, <laughs> I think they did watch a different movie. They must have watched. I think so. Like some Mark Wahlberg comedy or something, because this was just action. I mean, it was... I couldn't think of a movie with more action. It's just... It's it's got more action than Jason Bourne does. It's it's just crazy, um, full-on... I wouldn't go that far. I think it has. I, I think, you know, minute to minute, I think this is... It's like that kind of... It feels like Jason Bourne, the kind of the way it's made. Mm-hmm. Um, and... After I mean, you're saying them. that like it's surprising. I mean, it's an action movie where, you yeah. know, elite soldiers are risking their lives to save an entire nation. It's it's the same idea. Yeah, Jason Bourne never went to this level of violence, though, I don't think. Um, um, I don't know. I, I think, think it of depends anything. on your definition of violence. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of hardcore things. Blood doesn't ne- equal violence, necessarily, to me. There's a lot of crazy stabbing. Mm-hmm. And... Just, like, explosions that, like, don't, you know, they go off really close to people and then the people are kind of messed up from the explosions. There's a lot of grenade throwing in this movie as well, right? (laughs) It seemed like when they're in that building and there's grenades going off, it seemed like they didn't really care about the building. Just grenades were going to go, you know, let's blow a hole through this wall. I guess that's what you do, don't you? You've got to do anything to get out of there. Correct. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm going with the movie philosophy here. So, um, anything, did you like the, is there anything you didn't like about the... Mm, I actually just really, I just kind of let it be what it was, and... I think it, I think what it advertises itself as is what you get. I agree. It's, um, Matt Wahlberg's on the cover there with his machine gun. It actually, it, you know, it's that. It's a big action movie. There's a lot of smoke behind him, because there's quite a lot of explosions. <laughs> and, um... I didn't feel disappointed. I felt like it was a, you know, the story's wrapped up and it's, it doesn't, even though I said to you, they're thinking of making, well, they're not thinking it. They were planning this as a trilogy. Which is very, very, very obvious. At, right at the very end, you think? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, mm. yes. But it's its own self-contained story, though. Like, it feels, to me, it felt contained. Like, you could, you did, if there was never another one of this, the story stands on its own. It doesn't need a... Um, don't know about that. I mean, to me, it's the opening of the story. So you th- you, were, you think there's loose ends there? Uh, how could you not? I don't <laughs> understand. Well, it's a chapter, I guess. You could. I, I can see where it could go next. Yeah, there's no resolution. Right. There's just an explanation. Spoiler alert. But, I mean, there. there's no... It explains it in kind of that maybe maybe that's one thing I don't like. It explains it in like the dumbest fashion at the end. Yeah. Even I agree. even by Mark Wahlberg saying, Well, this is a really simple story and then he goes to onto it over this voiceover to explain what you what you're seeing, <laughs> really. It's like, hey, maybe they won't understand it, so we'll just say it. I don't really like that. It kind of I'd rather try and work it out, wouldn't you? It makes no, me, I was fine with that. Uh, it always, it always makes me like think that they don't have confidence in their story if they have to tell you what's going on over the top of it. Mm, yeah, you know, you can get that vibe if you're like, "What the hell's going on?" Like we showed this to some test audiences without that explanation, and they all said, "What the hell happened at the end?" <laughs> yeah. So we needed to make it so people did get it. That's how it feels to me. So that's maybe the only complaint I have, as far as like a kick-ass action you know, movie. I got what I wanted from it. So let's go on to the cast. Mark Wahlberg, again, plays James Silver. What do you think of Mark in this? It was fine. He he takes on board the role. I just have a feeling that character might be a little bit like him. I don't know. You I mean, don't know him. <laughs> did it annoy you, the snapping of the rubber band? No. Because I understood why what, what it was about, so that's fine. Uh, well, I explain. He, he snaps. He's kind of... Why can't you explain something? No, I'm explaining. He's kind of um, 
He's kind of hyper a little bit. He has a rubber band around his arm and he, he's always snapping it. Like he's, he's not hyper. They explained the entire thing about his mental... About, he's better than everybody else? Well, no. He has actual, like, disassociative disorders. He's extra violent. He has a high, super high intelligence. He can't get his mind to calm down. And at some point, a psychiatrist or psychologist... Told somebody him to snap his band. ...said, when you feel... Because it's like a rage inside of him and he's going to beat the shit out of somebody. When you start feeling like your mind can't, you can't calm yourself down, snap this band. And then that later a lady says what he understands is pain. Yeah. And so it's a little deeper than him being hyper. He's also um, terrible at kind of communicating with people. Well, he's kind of good at communicating with people because <laughs> yeah. he's very forthright, but he's got no tact at all. Like he just, he just says what it needs to be said in his mind. So it's. He's got a mission and that's yeah. it. Um, Which I like. I like that about his the His social, um, I guess his social uh, graces are not the best. But yeah, he does do what he has to do. And uh, some people kind of get rubbed up the wrong way uh, with him. Lauren Cohen plays Alice Kerr. Now we know Lauren Cohen because we watch The Walking Dead and she is Maggie in The Walking Dead. Yep. I've never seen her in anything else. I don't think. Maybe I have one thing. Don't recall it. What do you think of her? She was really good. I was impressed. And do you like her in The Walking Dead? Mm, I'm neutral. But remember, Walking Dead's lost me a lot of interest lately. This so. is a lot... She's a... I was thinking, oh shit, I'm not going to be able to get Maggie out of my head when I'm watching her. But she actually played a different thing. Absolutely. So I do appreciate that, because... I also think Mark Wahlberg, and people always say, oh, Mark Wahlberg just is the same guy in every movie. No, I think he really did something different here as well. Um, I mean, I he, yes, he looks like Mark Wahlberg, but I think he was doing something different, trying to get into the head of this guy. I don't know. If you think about some of his other roles, he does that fast talking, I'm going to explain everything to you because I'm intellectually superior to you and I'm going to explain to you how the world works and make <laughs> it very, very clear. And then you're going to go, holy shit, I never thought of it that way. That's yeah. what he does a lot of times. And he does that in this movie many times. Yeah. He, he, John Markovich said something, they stopped monologuing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, and talking of John Malkovich, he plays Bishop. Um, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I like John Malkovich. Yeah. He's not stretching his legs in this. No, it's pretty... What is that? Stretching his legs. Listen to you. You know, he's not like one of those legs. commentator people on the EW. His haircut kind of bothered me because I know he's a bald guy. <laughs> yeah, it did look pretty, <laughs> pretty fake. Yeah, that's... You know, a bald guy doesn't suddenly get like a buzz cut type haircut. It's, <laughs> it's obviously a stick on, but... It kind of bothered me. I was like, why can't we have bald John Malkovich? Or were they just like, well, we're sick of looking at that when we might look <laughs> different. Anyway, you've all seen the John Malkovich character in other movies. It might not even be him playing it, but it's the guy who is in charge. He's in front of computer screens and he's talking to them on the radio comms. That's what he is. And they, you know, he's the, he's the chief. Uh, and this guy was awesome. Now, have you you haven't seen the movies The Raid and The Raid Two? They're no, like, I, I've seen clips from them and I've always heard they're really good. They're like um, Korean movies, and they're martial arts based. The Raid was like a real simple concept. There's like a, a group of like these kind of guys who, after th this whole um, high rise block had been taken by these terrorists, and they have to go in, and it's like martial arts and gunfighting, which is like what this movie is. Yeah. But this guy, Eko Urice, he plays Lenor in this movie. He's like the the guy who they have to take on this journey across the city. And he's a badass martial arts guy. And some of my favorite parts of the movie was him fighting. Absolutely. And you don't like fighting that much. No, it has to be. It's very specific. And I was on board with, I think, every single one in this one. And this guy has a... It's visceral i said it a couple <laughs> yeah. of times it's just that that's what it is he um he'll fight you hand to hand but then if there's something that he can cut you with he'll cut you he will shoot and i felt that you anytime he was on the screen doing that stuff um nobody had a chance he was like this, i agree he was like this like ultimate weapon that you couldn't get past so I liked him. I thought his acting was good. Um, I'd like to see him again in other things. I, I think they should put him in Star Wars. It'd be cool in Star Wars. Doing that fighting. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I don't know. 
Uh, Ronda Rousey plays Sam Snow. She's the UFC um, fighter, and she's been in a few other movies, uh, including Fast and the Furious movies. Um, what did you think of her here? She was really good. I mean, it's right for her, isn't it, this role? But they don't give her a lot of speaking parts, did you notice? True, but her character, she's not a main, she's a supporting part of their team, so I wouldn't expect her to have a whole lot to say anyway. She's good at the action, though. I mean, mm-hmm. she, she and I'd buy her. She just, she's just like a tough bastard, she seems like. And I'm sure she is in real life. And then finally, Sam Medina as Axel. He's the other part of their crew. And um, I don't want to spoil anything, but you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I liked him too. thought they were all good, actually. They're, they're a pretty good team. So this is directed by Peter Berg, Patriot's Day, Deepwater Horizon, Lone Survivor. Those are the Berg twins movies. He also <laughs> did Battleship, which I believe you enjoyed. Yes, I did, actually. Very Bad Things, which I really enjoyed a lot. I thought that was a really cool movie at the time. It might be really dated, but it was so dark and weird at the time. I really liked it. <clears throat> he also did Friday Night Lights, with a, which a lot of people liked. So um, Peter Berg's, you know, I think he does a lot of different stuff. Well, looking at this list, though, he does a lot of action. <laughs> yep. But, I mean, Battleship is way different to something like Deepwater Horizon. It's... It, Battleship's like a crazy summer blockbuster and Deepwater Horizon's like a more of a focused true story action movie. What, how do you do you like him? Or what about as an actor even? I mean, he's an actor as well, right? He's even in this movie. A little bit he's in it. Yeah. <laughs> he's fine. He's pretty matter of fact always. I mean, there's not a lot of variables with him that I remember anyway. He's in that movie that I really love. I'll always recommend that movie, The Last Seduction. Yep. With Linda that. Florentino and him. I really, I really like him in that movie. Um, I like him as an actor, and I think he's a great director as well. I mean, he has his own like little niche thing, obviously, um, and it seems to be more and more him and Mark Wahlberg collaborating together. But I think they make good movies together. They're not like Oscar-winning, you know, deep movies, <laughs> but they're they're pretty well done, I think. Yeah. So, extras on the Blu-ray. There are a bunch. There's uh, introducing Ico Uace. I think that's his name. There's a thing about his fight. There's a badass women. Behind the scenes stunts. Model, modern combat. This movie was filmed in Colombia, even though the actual movie is... Bogota, Colombia. Yeah. The movie's not set there, but they kind of faked it. Um, so, you see that. And you uh, there's, that's it, really. Um... Extras are okay. They're very short mm-hmm. and brief. Promotional type. Defin- definitely promotional type. So, um, in conclusion, on uh, Mile 22, I would recommend it. You know, I would say I'm a fan of this kind of action movie, to be honest. I like I like Atomic Blonde, and I like um, s- these ones that we're about to recommend in our movie recommendations. And I know... I've seen some people, actual professional reviews there, reviewing it and say, well, you know, it's really cool and all that, but like you won't remember it because it's kind of generic. I I, don't disagree with that. I agree with that on a level as as well. Um, I can see why you'd say, well, I've seen loads of movies where people are, you know, having to get from one place to another and there's some shooting along the way. I agree. But um, I'd still recommend it if you if you're like an action movie because there are some surprising elements to it, and I think mainly it's the crazy like martial arts mixed with guns thing that uh, kind of crops up that I didn't expect. <laughs> so, uh, what about you? My recommendations? No, you're uh, just a finale on this. Uh, oh, maybe. I just enjoyed it. You I mean, I, don't, I think for a person who doesn't like chases, which there wasn't much of much chasing going on. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, not much. And fights or fight sequences. For me to sit there and be entertained and, and like you said, viscerally like, oh, oh, ah, 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 that leg break, ah, you know, or like shit, like they came out of nowhere or fascinated by how they would put it all together. And I'm, I'm lost in the story as well, because I think it's an interesting one, even though it's not I did original, say, but thing, I, I enjoyed it. One thing I meant, didn't mention earlier was how real things look. Mm-hmm. There, there are like... 
<clears throat> there's an there's a part where they just on like uh, the main high what do you call it like the <clears throat> main street of the town of the city, and there are some explosions and a big shootout. It looked like it was really happening. It was so kind of intense, and I was I said to you I turned to you and said this seems really real. I don't know what it is about it. it. Doesn't it's not because it's shaky cam and it's all done by. I mean they really blew stuff up. It was like yeah. weirdly real. Yeah, and like at the beginning when they, the, you know, that mission, there was an explosion there too that was like, whoa, that looks like they really exploded that place. Which I, I'm assuming they did, because it didn't seem green screeny this movie, did it? Mm, no, it se- no. It seemed like, oh no, we just blew some stuff up. So yeah, that's um, Mile 22. It's out now. Next week, we're looking at a movie called Mission Impossible Fallout. You know, I am a fan of Mission Impossible, and uh, Mission Impossible is, you know, I think it, this is the sixth or is it the fifth? Are you a fan? Um, I'm hit and miss. If I'm honest. You've always got to, I've always got to say to myself, wow, Tom Cruise is really doing that stunt? That's yeah. crazy. Because <laughs> he usually tops what he did last time. And I'm interested to see what he does this time after. After that last one where he was just hanging on a plane as it took off. I mean, at some point the novelty wears off. And I'm not, to be honest, that interested. But... I'm I'm a big, big fan of Mission Impossible. I know you are. So, um, movie recommendations. I am going on the theme of this movie, Mile 22. I will go with John Wick and its sequel, John Wick 2. Another movie that kind of blends gunfighting with kung fu. And it is just ultra, like, graphic, let's say. Yeah. And my other it one, has moments of like, oh, really? Do we need to co- be so excessive with the, you know? But when you take it in the context of that story, it's kind of comic booky, kind of over the top. I can accept it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that one is very comic booky. It's not realistic, but it's based on a graphic novel. But I really enjoyed those movies. Uh, and my other one is based on. Like a movie like this movie, but this one's based on a true story. It's 13 Hours by Michael Bay, which uh, stars the John Kravinsky from The Office. I really enjoyed that one. That one fe- that was a movie where I felt like it felt real, like you were just there with the soldiers. So there are my recommendations. What are yours? Mine are Atomic Blonde, because, you know, she kicks ass. And True Romance, because Alabama... Kicks some ass. That's an old school woman fighting there against Soprano guy. That's Spoiler not Soprano alert. guy. That's... Huh? He is. That's James Gandolfini to you. Yeah, he's Mr. Soprano. <laughs> Soprano. Whatever. Tony Soprano. Tony Soprano. Um, so that's one of those like early where she's, you know, and you can watch it and be like, oh, as if. But it's really good. It's a really oh, gut-wrenching. First of all, it's one of my favorite movies of all Quentin time. Quentin Tarantino wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my other one is uh, Man on Fire. Because I was trying to think of another one where a person, one of the themes is, because in this movie you have characters who sort of resolve in themselves in a moment that this is it for them. Like their life is about to end and they just want to give a big fuck you to the enemy and just be like, that's it. I'm going out and I'm going out with intention to do my best to just bring you down, and in Man on Fire, he does, uh, he kind of flicks that switch, and it's really it's really good. I mean, I guess it's really good. It seemed good at the time. I haven't it. seen it again since. You've mentioned two Tony Scott movies in your uh, uh, Tony list. Scott. You're right. Yeah, I told you Tony Scott is one of my favorites, and he uh, is. apparently he's one of yours too. <laughs> Not on purpose, but yes, he makes he made. I'm sorry to say, made good movies. Yeah, rest in peace, Mr. Scott. Um, so Ace Scully stuff, I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I probably talk really? about it every week. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm still not done with it. It's really cool still. Uh, lots of things. I've, I don't want to spoil it for people. You've seen a, quite a lot of it just from wandering mm-hmm. in when I'm watching it. The story's so good. The voice acting's so good. You know, it's a typical kind of cowboyish story, but I like, I like how, because it's so long, and I, I think I've played 80 hours, and the story's still going... I think because it's so long, um, you get a long time to understand the people around you, the supporting characters. When the supporting characters start to change their behavior, which you start to see, it's really subtle, 
and it's very slow. Like, this, the Dutch guy, it's no secret, because anybody who's played the original game. He's not from Deutschland. He's Dutch. No, His Dutch. name is Dutch. He's called Dutch Vanderlind. But um, he's a... He's the bad guy in the first in Red Dead Redemption movie uh, game, sorry, movie. And this is a prequel to that game, so you're seeing him become like this from become from being like this personable kind of you know, what would you call him? He's almost like a cult leader. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say that's fair. Charismatic f- guy who can talk people around and stuff. You start He's like like I said, he's like the guy from Oliver Twist. Yeah. You know, gets everybody to do his bidding and basically is the control freak. Yeah. Sort of the criminal genius guy. And but so, he has all these people intimidated by him or beloved. He He's beloved to them. Yeah, it's not. they're not really intimidated by him. They're just like, he is the guy. Everything will work out if we go by well, what he Well, you wouldn't does. want to not give him part of your money. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the agreement. You give him some of your money and you, you or all live else. as his family. Yeah. <laughs> what? He just pats you on the back and says, oh, well, never I mind. I guess he sends you off into the wilderness and you're not part of his... Exactly. So he's intimidating. But, um, you know, he, he starts to say just... Maybe he'll say just one little line to you. He said something and you, you kind of soak that in and then uh, five hours later he says something else and then you're like... Where he's, what's his head at? It's not the same as what it used to be. Like, I, I don't even understand how my character, Arthur, I don't understand where I fit with him. Like, I'd love to sit him down and talk to him about what do you think of me and why are you being a bit weird? But he starts to get weirder and weirder and more outrageous and kind of like, oh, you know, I meet up with him one time and he's like, yeah, what we're going to do now? is rob this bank and then pushes me in the door of the bank. And I'm like, there's been no build-up to this bank robbery or anything. All of a sudden, he goes from this guy who plans everything meticulously to I'm a guy who pushes you into a bank with a gun and we do a bank robbery. Right. So he's losing it. Like, he's just, you know, he's not very careful anymore. He thinks he can't handle all, you know, he feels responsibility for all his people and he thinks he can't, you know, save them. But it's slowly happening, and he's getting bad, but you still feel for him because he's not actually f- fully a bad person. So I really like that, and I know what becomes of him in the other game. Oh, yeah. So watching it, watching the lead-up to that is very interesting. And like I say, some people are saying, well, this game's too long, it's too boring. The actual characterization of the char- of all the characters is... It's just really well done. And you can never do that in a movie. You can't, in a movie, you can't have a line and then five hours later have like a payoff for that line because no movies are that long, are they? So I really like it. TV shows, I guess, could do it. Yeah, absolutely. Game of Thrones, I think, does it well. But games are in a, you know, an unusual position of being, they can be very long, like 100 hours. So there's a lot of stuff they can do. So I am going with Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm still enjoying it. I see people's complaints and I understand some of them. I know people don't like riding the horse around all the time. But for me, I have a particular style of gaming where I actually do like the tedious parts of games. (laughs) I don't know what that is exactly. I don't know why I like that. I I think I can trace it back. When I was like a, a teenager and I had a Commodore 64... I remember being the most excited ever, right? There was a game, and I was I was flipping through one of these magazines. It was called Zap 64 back in the day. And you people who had Commodore 64s know what I'm talking about. And there was I saw this advert for a game, and it said, like, I think it was called The Great American Road Race. And I looked at it, and it was like, yeah, this is the first racing game where you can race all the way across America, and it will take, like, 25 hours start to finish. And I was like... I want to do that. I want to I want to just do that tedious game. Like I want to <laughs> I don't want to like in 2 minutes just race like around a track. I want to actually race through all those different places. And you know, it was really rudimentary and the difference between like you know, Oregon and 
Alaska was just the color palette. Like, <laughs> just that was the only difference. But, um, you know, I sat there for hours and hours driving, pretending that I was doing that thing. So I think it stems from that. I just want to do the tedious things in games and they give me pleasure. I don't know. It's weird. So uh, I don't we, think it's weird. Yeah, well, it's not the norm, I guess, because some people just say, I just want to fast travel. I don't want to ride on the horse. I just want to appear where the mission is and do the mission, right? Whereas I'm like, no, I just want to drive across the country and look at it all. Because look at it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to stop. What did we do? We stopped. I climbed up a mountain. Well, like a a rock formation. Stood on top and we took photographs. Yeah, you on never top. wouldn't even have climbed up there if I hadn't said, like, can you even get up there? Because it didn't look like you could, and then you did. And then we took some photographs on top with the in game camera. And it was like a little adventure. Just, you know, and most people would never do that, right? Because it wasn't necessary. So I think you make your own fun in Red Dead Redemption. So, uh. In that show that you went to, there was a show in town in a theater and. You would never even... There's no reason to go in there. There's no mission. There's no. no payoff. You could just... They had signs outside, like, for a vaudeville show or whatever, and you went in and sat in a chair, and a guy did a thing, and a woman sang or whatever, and The show lasted about 15 minutes. I watched <laughs> yeah. the whole show. But GTA did that as well, so yeah. it's not new to them to do that. And those are my favorite things. Like, in GTA 4, you know, the first time I was like... I drove into New York City, and I was like, oh, there's a comedy club go in the comedy club and Ricky Gervais gives you a whole like 30 minute yeah. performance. I was like, oh my God, I want to stay here and watch this over and over. It's so cool. So yeah. That makes I think people, it's just crazy. It's like people bitch because the game is $70 and then bitch because they have to do too much. <laughs> it's like if I had to pay $70 to see a two six, hour, six. a two, a movie, it yeah. better be 50 fucking hours long. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously. Like, yeah, that's also my You thing. and I can sit and watch, though, a four-hour movie, and if it's a good movie, we're just excited and sad to see it be ended. Like, I'd be like, oh, no, it's over, and, you know. Have you noticed less and less movies are, are, are getting, you know, we don't get really long movies so Yeah. Much. Like, Blade Runner was the last one. It was, like, nearly three hours, and I was like, oh, my God, they're making a sequel to Blade Runner, and it's nearly three hours? That was awesome. <laughs> But mostly that doesn't happen now. Like, we just watched Mile 22. It's, you know, 90 minutes long. So uh, that's it. And I also played some more Tetris Effect. Still haven't got to the end. Um, I've got two levels left. It's really cool, isn't it, Tetris Effect? I love it. I mean, I don't like it being hard. So as soon as it gets hard, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah, but, but it doesn't have to be hard. You can play that. Nope. No death mode. But then whatever. if I get in the zone, yeah, get that Tetris Effect going... Then I'm like, I'm in. I can do magical things. All right, what's for dinner? I don't know yet. It just, I, from the <laughs> guidelines here, what we're having for dinner is a colon. A <laughs> colon. Well, your colon will be affected in some way. I don't know. What do you want? A colon. We only tell you. We're not having a colon because we don't eat animals anymore. I don't know if you're aware of that for the last 10 years. Uh, we are vegetarian. And the reason this segment started was because in the beginning, people, and they still do it, so it hasn't relieved anything. But, like, really? You're vegetarian? What do you eat? <laughs> like, well, everything else that isn't a dead animal. And that's a lot. If you go to the store, notice, next time you're in the store, the meat section is the smallest section in the store. There's everything else yeah. that's edible. No, we do, we're not vegan, so we still do dairy and egg. So we might have some uh, more, f I don't know, chips and soup? Yeah. Or I could go get Jimmy John's? No. Chips and soup sounds good. And when I say soup, I mean I open a couple cans of cheap vegetables, pour in some veggie broth, put in some cabbage, let it cook. That's soup. I reckon <laughs> chips and soup. That sounds good. Well, there All you right. go. All right. So what's your um, advice? My advice is, and a lot of people are going to disagree, but I don't care. That's part of the point. Don't agree because it's easier. Like if you start agreeing with things people say that, it, and I'm not talking about the little shit, like what do you want for dinner? Oh, we'll have soup. No, we're going to have Jimmy John's. Oh, okay, whatever. I mean, that's a small thing. I mean, on the bigger stuff, bigger stuff. When, you're, when somebody's having a big discussion or in your life, it's something getting pressed upon you because it's easier to just go along with it. Unless your life is threatened, 
which is possible and very realistic situation, but don't agree because it's easy because it's going to eat you up inside. You will feel like you are nothing. If you give away to somebody else who just wants to bully you or press upon you or insist that you agree with them and you let them have that on the bigger stuff, it will, you will just disappear because you just don't want to deal with it. It's just easier if I don't, you know, I'm not talking about like at Christmas dinner when you see this cousin once every 50 years and you just don't give a shit. I mean, like in your life, some would say I disagree a lot with things people say. Would you, have you noticed that? I would say that. (laughs) And I don't disagree for the sake of it, unless we're in an argument where someone sells me a load of bullshit. I may agree with their original point, but their rationale to get there, I just am like, are you kidding me? What about this, this, and this? So I have a tendency to be, mm, you know, Counter okay. counterpoint is my <laughs> that should be my superhero name. I am counterpoint, um, but in life, after a while, you know, someday you, your life's going to be done, and if you just gave in constantly to ideas that you do not agree with, and that actually bother you when you walk away from a conversation, or you go in your bedroom at night, and everyone else in your household is satisfied that you're part of the gang. Or some bullshit and you're, it's just eating you up. Well, that's what it's doing. It's eating you up. You're just, you're like dust. You're turning to dust and there'll be nothing left of you. Because you, there is no you. You're just stamped into like a cookie cutter shape the way they want you to be. And I'm not into that. So don't well, agree because it's easy. Well said. Uh, debatable. It will win nah, a See, I get you. <laughs> see, counterpoint. <laughs> All right, so you can catch uh, us on uh, ascully.com, A-S-C-U-L-L-Y.com. Catch this podcast on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, You can catch this podcast also on Google Play, iTunes Music Store. If you've got Amazon devices or Google Play devices, we're in both of those stores. You can also catch us on YouTube now. And email feedback to me at ascully, ascully.com. Don't email Sid Talk. She doesn't like you. (laughs) That's not And accurate. she also disagrees with you. I will. Disagree. If you just want the fun of being disagreed with, I'm your woman. And uh, stay classy, Mr. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> Feel the vibrations. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to say, think for yourself or someone will do it for you. Bye.